In today's video, we're jumping back to our NHL offseason playing series. We're making our way up to the 10th ranked Toronto Maple Leafs for the 23-24 regular season. According to GM Brad Tree Living and President of Hockey Ops Brendan Shanahan, everything is on the table for change going into next year. What expectations should we have for this team? What changes will we see? We'll discuss what the future could look like this offseason coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. It's time to take a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs, the 10th ranked team from the regular season. If you're new to this series, here's a quick breakdown on how these videos will be structured. Essentially, we're going to do a quick recap of last year. So we're going to look at some t uh, team stats and some individual stats from 23-24, examine the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to take a look at any off-season changes we saw, uh, followed up by looking at their cap space, expiring contracts, and then... You you know what that all means for what the questions are that they need to face this offseason what are our expectations what will they do we'll give you our thoughts and opinions here as we get further into the video so let's first recap the 23-24 campaign for the Toronto Maple Leafs of course again in the top three of the Atlantic division uh, this time finishing in third place which was unfortunate in a way they don't get home ice advantage but they do end up with a first round series with the Boston Bruins after doing 102 points in the regular season with a record of 46 26 and 10 and unfortunately their Bruins nemesis Got them again in the playoffs. Uh, this is a series that, you know, we've seen kind of repeat itself here numerous times in the last yeah, number of years where the Leafs just seems like they can't uh, get through the kryptonite of the Boston Bruins. Another first-round loss, unfortunately, after last year when they made some good progress and beat Tampa in round one. They lost in round two, but at least they won a round for the first time in a long time. Take a step back. So uh, the Leafs... Good regular season again. Step back in the playoffs, unfortunately, after making progress last year. Looking at their key, uh, key team stats, uh, they were the second highest scoring team in the NHL, 298 goals, second best. Uh, 21st, though, in goals against. That needs to get better. 261 goals against. That's uh, that's not great. And that largely comes from inconsistent goaltending, to say the least. Uh, special teams were... We're decent on the power play, 24%, which was seventh best. And even then, I mean, it had its moments where it clicked at a really high rate, and it had its big moments when it was important, when it didn't come through at all. Um, overall, 24%, still pretty good. Um, you got to respect them and, you know, be cautious with giving them too many chances because they do have the talent to make you pay. And they did that more often than not. It'd just be nice to see them come through with the big goal when it matters most, especially uh, in the playoffs. So the penalty kill, 76.9%, 23rd best. Again, not the best. Uh, you know, to be a solid uh, cup contender, they need to get the goals against and the penalty killing needs to get better. Those are the two main areas that, based on this past year, needs to improve. Individually speaking, their top performers was Austin Matthews, who wins the Rocket Richard Trophy. 69 goals, 107 points. Phenomenal year for Matthews. Nylander, again, had a breakout year, of course. Got his big contract extension partway through the season. Scored 40 goals, 98 points. Looked like he was going to end up having a 100-point campaign as well. Just fell a little bit short. Mitch Marner is number three at 85 points. Uh, looked like he was on pace for another 9,500 point season as well, but did miss time later in the season with injury and uh, ended up falling short. Uh, there's a big drop off after those big three down to J JT John Tavares next at number four, 65 points. Uh, so 20 point gap between Marner and Tavares. And the fifth highest score on the team was top defenseman Morgan Riley. With 58 points. Uh, Goaltending, like I said, was not the most consistent. Uh, they tried to give Elias Samsonov as many opportunities to run with it. And at times he was really good. And at times he was not good at all. Uh, very inconsistent, which was a big problem for them. Joseph Wall was pretty solid when he was able to play. But unfortunately, Wall was not healthy for a large part of the season, which seems to be the story of his young career. Samsonov finished with 23-7-8 and record, which is not bad. But it just goes to show you that the Leafs were able to outscore his issues a lot of times, but not when it mattered most. 3.13 goals against in an 890 save percentage, where Joseph Wall had a 12, 11, and 1 record with a 907 and a 2.94 goals against. So I had the better stats, but was not available nearly enough. 
Um, and as far as in-season changes, uh, we saw a number of things take place with the Leafs throughout the campaign. Early in the season, they had traded Sam Lafferty. Uh, he gets moved over to the Canucks for a fifth-round pick. Uh, later in the year at the deadline, they picked up Ilya Labushkin on defense as well as Joel Ebenson. Uh, for Labushkin, they gave up a third. For Ebenson, they gave up a third and a fifth. They also picked up Connor Dewar from uh, Minnesota for a fourth round pick as well. Uh, so their deadline moves for the most part were pretty good. Of course, last year they were busy making some changes as well. And then, of course, after everything that went through at the end of the season, they fired Sheldon Keefe. So Keefe takes the uh, the blow here for uh, you know the, the the lack of progress, you could say. And ultimately, he's the scapegoat for the top performers. Not getting the job done. Uh, at the end of the day, could, could Sheldon Keefe be better? And will he be better? He's already been hired as a new coach of the New Jersey Devils. So I think he landed on his feet and it will be just fine. Uh, at the end of the day, I think there were times where he was out coached, But at the end of the day, too, he can't get on the ice and make his players do things that he wants them to do if they won't do them. It's just that simple. But a change behind the bench, I think, was necessary. He had been there for quite some time now. And, of course, with new uh, management, uh, it was... Uh, not a shocking news at all that Keefe was ousted. Uh, heading into the offseason, the cap space, they have $18.8 million. They have 16 contracts on the books out of a maximum 23. So you're looking at signing about six or seven players. They typically end up having to run with you know 20, 21 player roster because they quite often can't fit everybody under. But of course, you know, lots of questions facing this team, which we'll get to here in a moment. Hard to say what this roster is going to look like, but let's first, first look at their expiring contracts on the restricted free agent side they have connor dewar uh, who said he was picked out from minnesota they've got noah gregor who they signed as a ufa uh, nick robertson needs a new contract defenseman timothy Lilgren as well i do suspect that gregor might be let go um dewar i expect will be signed robertson and Lilgren. I think will be signed, but they may not be Maple Leafs next year. We'll get into that in the next segment here. On the UFA side, they've got Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi, TJ Brody, Joel Evanson, uh, Mark Giordano, Ily Labushkin, Ilya Samsonov, and Martin Jones. That's a lot of names and a lot of defenders at that. Uh, there is interest to bring back Bertuzzi and Domi both. Hard to say if they both get done and become Maple Leafs again, but uh, there is mutual interest for both sides to work out contracts. But as I record this video uh, on Wednesday evening, uh, this may not make it to YouTube till Thursday or Friday, but as of right now, they are not signed and hard to say for sure if they will be. But like I said, there is negotiations ongoing. The Leafs would like to keep both of them if they can get them for the right price. Uh, expectations are that TJ Brody will not be back. Giordano will likely not be back. I suspect Giordano is probably going to retire. Uh, you know, playing past the age of 40 is not something you see very much. So uh, I, I don't know that he's got any gas left in the tank. That's just my opinion. I do think there's some interest to retain Joel Ebenson, but sounds like he's likely heading to market. We'll see what's out there on free agency before possibly re-signing with the Leafs. I don't know that Labushkin's going to be back uh, either, um, and I don't think Samsona is going to be coming back unless they absolutely can't find any other options based on the comments from Brad Trilovy at the end of the year. It didn't sound like there was any interest to bring back Samsonov. So uh, there was apparently some interest to bring back Jones, who apparently was fine being the number three goaltender. Um, so that might be something we see yet again, but I'm not sure what direction they're going. It's probably going to depend on who their one and two is in that position. They may have to wait a little bit before Jones gets a deal. At the 2024 NHL draft, the Maple Leafs currently have seven draft picks, including their first rounder. Right now, they're selecting to pick 23rd overall. Last year, late in the first round, of course, they got Easton Cowan, who at the time, many thought was a bit of a reach and was drafted a little bit of high. But he's had one heck of a year uh, for development. And the, the London Knights forward, it uh, looks like he has potential to be a real good player. And I think the Leafs are going to look like a very smart team for picking him when they did, even though a lot of teams had him ranked lower than what they did. Now, the top questions facing this franchise heading into the offseason, there's certainly some big ones. Number one being, who is your goaltending tandem? We know Joseph Wall will be there. The big question with Joseph Wall is how many games can you play him because he's hurt so much. You can't really bank on Joseph Wall, in my opinion, playing more than about 30, 35 games. Uh, and that's probably a best-case scenario. If he can stay healthy, I don't think you want to overdo it. Don't push your luck. He's good, but you need to get him through a couple of healthy seasons, I think with some lower games played than you might like before you really 
push him to be that starting goaltender that can give you 50-55 games. I don't know that he's ready for that. I would be and maybe he is. That's the thing, right? From a talent perspective, I think he can hand, like he'd be fine. But the health issues have been so prevalent throughout his young career that if you bank on that and he gets hurt again and you don't have proper reassurance behind him, then you're screwed. And you're going to waste another year of some of these top forwards. So to me, I don't think you go down that road. You need another solid goaltender to work with him in a tandem. Uh, Samsonov, I don't think, is that guy. Uh, there's some talk that they've been looking at. Calgary Flames goalie Jacob Markstrom, who today got traded to the New Jersey Devil. So that's not an option anymore. Rumor was, though, according to many sources, that they were very much in there trying to see if they could work that out. It didn't happen. Uh, there's some to believe that they've also inquired with uh, the Predators on UC Saros. There's some that say they've inquired with the Bruins on Lena Solmark. It'd be really weird to see the Bruins and Leafs make a trade. That's not something you see very often. Um, Saros, I think it would be very expensive. Uh, I can understand the interest, but challenging. Um, so it's hard to say what other direction they go. I mean, you get John Gibson in Anaheim who's available. Um, you know, other than that, you're, you know, nobody who's really um, a real good upgrade, you could say. So unless another name comes out of the blue, maybe Philip Gustafson in Minnesota. So I do. They have to figure this out. There's not much in free agency. Um, there's been some saying that they're very interested in Laurent Brossois out of the Winnipeg Jets, who's been a really, really good backup. But again, like Joseph Wall, has faced a lot of injuries and adversity in his career. He's been really good when he's been healthy. Um, but, you know, when is he healthy? Again, if you run with Brossois and Wall, you're going to have a high probability that one of them is always injured. And that just is no good. So uh, from a capability, talent perspective, yeah, it's, it's a good tandem. I don't know that you really want to risk it, though. I mean, there's Vegas. Vegas might move a goaltender as well, actually. Um, and that makes you wonder about, are they going to trade Mitch Marner? It's a hot topic, and nobody knows the answer. Uh, at the end of the day, Marner controls the situation. He has a no-move clause. If he really doesn't want to move, he won't. Um, this belief is that uh, Darren Dreger now has said recently that he thinks that Trey Living would rather extend him than sign him. And they're like, okay, you sound like Paul Marner, not Mitch Marner. Um, we know Dreger seemed to be getting fed all kinds of info from the Marner camp and family during his contract negotiation a number of years ago when he, uh, the current contract he has with the Leafs when that was gone going. So, again, if, if to me, if Dreger saying that, you got to be careful with what you believe. Um, I'm not convinced of that. I think the Leafs right now are willing to just look at just about anything. I really believe them when they say everything's on the table, but they have to get the right offer that makes sense. And at the end of the day, they're not going to go to Marner and say, hey, we want to trade you. Will you waive? They're not going to just have this random conversation uh, without having a specific deal or team involved. There's no point, right? I mean, if they don't find a deal they like for Marner, they risk losing him as a UFA next year if they really don't want to extend him. And it might kind of force their hand to go in a direction they don't want to go. So, you know, Elliot Friedman had made mention that you know, he expects if, that for, for Marner, the Vegas to be all around it. So they could get a goaltender that way, which would answer the goaltending question. And, of course, that would also answer the are you trading Mitch Marner question. You could get a good haul, a good package from, from Vegas. Or like Shea Theodore and Logan Thompson or Shea Theodore and Aiden Hill or something to that matter. Like, they got two good goaltenders. They got a really good defenseman in Theodore who's got one year left on his deal. He was expected to... Probably be their next cap casualty there. Um, they got some good forwards. Like You could get a real good package for Marner from Vegas. It would be one of the better trade partners, in my opinion. And it can answer a bunch of questions for, for, the, for the Leafs. So we'll have to see where that goes. But to me, if you are trading them, um, it, it's going to have to come here soon enough. And to me... Vegas makes a lot of sense. I we've heard Chicago as well that he would be. Dave Pagnotta said that he thinks Marner would be open to going to Chicago to play with Bedard. That would be more challenging, though, for Chicago to give Toronto something that they want in return. Uh, is Seth Jones going to get it done? I wouldn't think, right? So, you know, on the decor, they, there's obviously questions there. Uh, they've got a lot of UFA defensemen. Uh, Jake McCabe needs a contract extension, so they got to work on that. Timothy Lilgren is reportedly on the trade block, so he might get moved. Um, you know, then they said you got Brody and Giordano likely aren't back. 
Edmondson is iffy to be back, you know. So at the end of the day, you've got a lot of question marks on the back end. So they do need to figure out bringing in a couple defensemen. And if they do trade Marner, they're probably getting one that way. If they don't, while well, they're looking at free agency, which you know there's they're believed to be trying to get Chris Tana, but join a list of a long list of teams that are interested in trying to do that. So it's hard to say. The other big question is, would they even approach John Tavares about waving? And to be honest, I think they would like to consider it, but I think the answer is going to be no. I think the uh, likelihood of trading him with his contract would be very much non-existent. You can't buy him out because you get no cap relief the way it's structured. Um, so that's not an option. Um, even if you retain half, like to move him, you're probably going to add something to it. A team's not going to take an $11 million contract or even a if you retain money, knock it down to five and a half, six. I mean, you're not going to get a great return. I, I just, I don't see it happening for, you know, a 65 point player now at his age. Good player still, like he, he can serve a good purpose, sure, but you know he's not that high valued player anymore. So I, I don't, I don't know that that's even worth it. I think you just let him ride out that year, and then you either see how this year goes, and you consider saying. Okay, we'll bring him. We're willing to bring him back if he wants to sign for cheap, like a lot cheaper, on a couple year extension, or you just completely move on. Uh, one of the two, depending on how the year goes. Uh, but with Marner, to see him walk for nothing, completely different story. He's a high draft pick of theirs, somebody who's developed in the organization a long time. To see him walk next year if they don't move him with no return would be a real kick in the gonads for the Leafs organization, in my opinion. And I, I just don't think they can chance that. So you either extend them or you trade them. And if you really think something's got to change, like he's he's your main trade chip. I, I know you, you shouldn't trade Marner just for the sake of trading Marner and saying, hey, okay, we did something different. You can't do that. That's stupid. But at the same time, you're not trading uh, Willie. You're not trading Matthews. Is it Morgan Riley that goes? But then your decor gets significantly worse. I understand the fact that Riley maybe isn't the number one defenseman that everybody thinks he is. I don't. I think he's a, he'd be a much better number two if you could bring in a number one. But that's not his fault. And to be honest, like he's still pretty good. He's not. His contract's decent for what he gives you. Been there a long time, longest serving Leaf. I, he's not the problem. So it really boils down to Marner. But like I said before, with Marner, you got to be careful. You better be careful because he is a high point producing player. He does serve a good purpose. Yeah, I know he he doesn't play well when the pressure is on him. The story of his career, I've seen people say that they've been watching Marner play since he was like in youth hockey. And same thing, when the playoffs come along and when the games matter the most, you're not going to see him get physical. You're not going to see him block shots. Like You're just not going to see him be that guy that does all those crazy things on the ice where you're just like in awe from you know that type of perspective. He's, he's going to either give you that offensive uh, dangle of a highlight real goal or assist and – you know, that kind of play struggles in the playoffs because you don't have the time and space to execute like you do in a regular season. That's why he struggled. And, I mean, and he doesn't struggle as much as fans let on either. If you look at his stats, he actually does produce. It's just, it's the biggest games. When the, the most is on the line, he seems to disappear. And I think the pressure of the hometown kid gets to him. I think it really does. I really would think he would probably benefit uh, personally a lot from a fresh start and playing in another another organization. But um, like I said, that's not um, that's you know he's going to have that opportunity in a year's time when he's a free agent. But until then, he could be a leap if he really wants to and be difficult. And I don't think between he and his agent, what we've seen from his family, I don't think they're afraid to be difficult either. So some think that if uh, the you know if Mitch feels like okay they don't want me anymore, I'll wave, I'll leave. But we'll have to wait to be seen. That's going to be the big question of the summer is do the Leafs trade Mitch Marner? That's be one of the biggest storylines to follow. So let me know your thoughts on that and what they're going to do and their expectations and what this roster looks like in the fall because there's a lot of openings and lots of rumblings about what they may or may not do. So let me know what you think in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.